written in that book they call the Bible. We give you thanks that we have your spirit, which will lead us to all understanding. We thank you, almighty God, for we have the brethren, because two is greater than one. We give you thanks, O heaven and Father, O God, that this place has never shut down. The Walmarts shut down, O God. They weren't open 24-7 anymore. The house of God have never been shut, O God. And we give you thanks, O God, for the kingdom of heaven shall never be shut. And if we cry out to you, if we worship you, almighty God, we will witness your strong arm to deliver your people in the midst of chaos, almighty God. You make a way. May we be reminded, oh God, of that Red Sea. May we be reminded of that Jordan. It says when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith? In the name of Jesus, I pray a great deal of faith upon everybody in here. Those of you that are online, I pray a faith that moves mountains in your households this morning. I pray an experience with the living God that will transform your life forever. Anybody who did not give their life to Jesus Christ, oh God, listening to this worship, listening to this word, may they be forever transformed, oh heaven and Father, oh God. May they, oh heaven and Father, be filled with the, with the Holy Spirit, oh God. May they, oh heaven and Father, almighty God, seek you with all their heart, their mind, their soul, and with all their strength, oh God. May they leave everything behind to follow after you. My God, we give you thanks for your able to finish what you started. Those who are restless, those who are weary, may we, O oh Heavenly Father, lay it all before your feet this morning. My God, in a generation that is looking for the answers, please help us to understand how to properly distribute what everybody needs but don't know that they need, O oh God. Touch us, strengthen us, cleanse us, I pray and I ask in Jesus' name, O oh God. May this not be Sunday service. May this be a Holy Spirit experience, Almighty God, in the temple of God. May this be, O oh Heaven and Father, something, Almighty God, that we'll never forget. May this be, O oh Heaven and Father, O oh God, an opportunity for us, O oh God, to do as you have instructed us to do. May we have faith, even if it's the size of a mustard seed. We thank you that we have worshipers. We thank you that we have teachers. We thank you that we have a shepherd, almighty God, that is not fearful of man, but have reverence for you. We thank you that we have the equipment to, oh, Father, oh, God, for this message to go worldwide if necessary, oh, God. We thank you, oh, heaven and Father, that no matter how they tried, oh, heaven and Father, they could not knock us down. For he that is with us is greater than that that is against us, oh, God. We give you thanks because I have not even seen ear heaven heard, almighty God, what you have in store for Kendall Community Church of God this day. May we, O oh Father, O oh God, as Joshua, O oh Father, told the people as they look upon the Jordan, leave everything, O oh God, that cannot cross over there, O oh God, behind. We magnify your name and we thank you. It's in the holy name of Jesus we pray. Hallelujah. Shout a praise to the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Amen. Good morning, church. Joseph, good to see you, bud. Those who are standing out there, come on in. Come on in. Hallelujah. Let's have some fun. It goes like this. Yeah.
Thank you, God. We know that your name has the power to break every, every burden that we're feeling right now. Every burden, all the heaviness, your name has the power to come in and just break that. Oh, Jesus. 
You silence you my fear. the darkness tremble. Jesus. Come on, let's sing it out. You silence fear. Jesus. Jesus. You make the darkness tremble. Jesus. Jesus. The darkness has to flee. Jesus. The darkness has to flee. Don't be afraid. Let's worship. Let's worship. The light is overpowering right now. You make the darkness tremble. The darkness has to flee. Silence fear. Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble. Nice and loud. Your name is a light that the shadows can't deny. Your name cannot be overcome. Let's declare it. Your name is a light forever lifted high. Your name cannot be overcome. It's a light. Last time. Here we go. Shadows can't deny your name. Thank you, Jesus.
stay here for a little bit. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's stay here for a little bit as we prepare our hearts to take the communion as brother comes up here to give us and help us out in the communion. Let's just stay here and just, just thank the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. Thank you, Father. Thank you for dying on that cross for us, Father God. Thank you, Father, because we know that on the third day you resurrected and you are very much alive. You are very much alive, Father God. You are watching over our children, Father God. You're watching over each and every single one that's here, Father God. We are so grateful, Lord. Thank you, Father. Ego sum. 
René Descartes said that a few hundred years ago. And all academia kind of were like, wow. He said, I think, therefore I am. What an incredible thing to say. But they didn't realize that René Descartes was God's image. And all he was doing was quoting scripture. Because a few thousand years before that, Yahweh said to Moses, Higher, Hasher, higher. I am what I am. God says more than Rene Descartes. It's not because he thinks that's why he exists. God says, Because I exist, you exist. Because I exist, this exists. Because I exist, I made all of this for you. What an amazing God. What an amazing God. Then Jesus came around and he reminded us. He said, before Abraham was, I am. Ego I me, I am. I existed before Abraham. I made this what you're looking at. I had a hand in this. I made this. I was there with him from the very beginning. And he, Jesus was taking over. He was saying, because I am, you are also. Because I am, you know the way. So Jesus broke it down for us with some I am statements. He said, I am the bread of life. Your daily bread, everything you need, he is. Everything you need, he can provide it. He is not broke, he is not poor. I'm from Nigeria. We call bread dough. We call money bread. <laughs> That's what we call it. Yeah, you got some bread, you got some money. Meaning that you have what you need. And Jesus was saying, no, nah, no, nah, I am the bread. You don't need anything apart from me. I could provide everything for you. He says, I am the light of the world. If you don't have me, you're in darkness. You're groping in darkness. René Descartes can do nothing for you. Your philosophy can do nothing for you. I am the light. The only way you could see is through me. The only way you could truly understand is through me. Everything else is just a shadow of me. Without me, you cannot figure it out. Without me, you do not understand. I am the light. I am the gate of the sheepfold. He is the gate. He is the door. He is the one that cares for us. He is the one, the good shepherd that takes care of the sheep. Without him, we'll, get, we'll hurt ourselves. Without him, without the good shepherd, without that rod and our staff, we have no guidance in this world. He is the gate of the sheepfold. He is the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd, he says. And he says, I am the resurrection and the life. You see, this is just a breath. The oldest person, I think, is like 120-something years old. Compared to eternity, it is just a breath. Jesus said he is the resurrection. He's not going to make you. He's not forcing you to believe it. But he's showing you the proof. And he's asking you, are you going to look at what I'm showing you? Are you going to see that I am the resurrection and the life? No one can come to God except by me. He, he lays it down. He just lays down the facts for us. Do we see it? Do we accept it? He is the way. There is no other way. They all say all religions are the same. We don't have a religion. We have a relationship with our God. And he is the way. We are following along his way. And that's what we are here for today. To follow his way. To follow his light. And he is the true vine. 
Because if we're not plugged into that vine, we wither and we die. He's the one that will provide the nourishment, the sustenance that we need. Do you believe those seven I am statements? Do you believe he is the way? Do you believe he's the light? Do you believe he's the resurrection? So he offers to us one last suggestion. If you believe those things, if you know those things, if you've tested those things in your heart, come forward and share this meal with other members of the family that believe the same. Let us remember what that light, what that bread has done for us. Let us remember how he sacrificed and he stood in the gap for us so that we do not have to ever taste death. So let's come forward and remember what he has done and give him thanks and praise for it. Amen.
take and you don't have the bread, there are people walking around, please just raise your hands if you want to partake and you don't have anything yet. Can we please stand together? Matthew 26. 26. Now, as they were eating, Jesus took the bread and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take this, take, eat, this is my body. Father God, we thank you, Father God, that we have the opportunity to partake in this. We have the opportunity to partake in you, Father God, to be able to say that you are the life, you are the light, you are the way, Father God. We ask you to please bless what we're about to do, Father God, knowing that we are doing this in memory of you. We are doing this because we understand the sacrifices you have made for us, and we are saying thank you, God. took a cup and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink it all of you for this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins oh father God we thank you that you stood in the gap for us father God that you took the punishment that we deserve that all of our iniquities was laid upon you, Father God. And out of faith, Father God, we are drinking this wine and praising you for what you have done. Knowing that when we stand in front of the judgment seat, it's not what we've done that brought us there. It is what you have done for us. So we give you thanks in the name of Yahushua, Jesus, your son. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. God bless everyone. This is that time where we do the offering. And I just give God thanks. I give God thanks because he's given everything that we ever could need in order to not just survive, but to persevere in this life. He has given us life abundant. I give God thanks because his word is true and his steadfast love endures forever. I thank God for everyone that is in here this day because we have the opportunity to hear his word go forth. I give God thanks because we went to sleep and we woke up this morning to come to the house of God. I give God thanks because he always does exactly what he said he would do. 
He is faithful and he is true. And since we're image bearers of the living God, we also have to be faithful and we have to be true. He asks, who do they say that I am? And I don't know about anybody here, but I bear witness there's no name above his name. I was lost in this world and I cried out. I used every foul language I could have used. Nothing worked. But I called upon the living God. The atmosphere was cleared instantaneously. I remember where I was and I looked to see where I am. And there's nothing but the living God that can do that. And I bear witness to some of us in here that have also been transformed. I've witnessed the living God do supernatural things in our lives. I've witnessed the living God show up in the midst of our circumstance, in the midst of our situation. And I give God thanks because he is always faithful. The only thing is, he needs us to show that we believe. When he did the miracle with two fish and five loaves, he didn't need that. But he needed the people to see that you got to put something in in order for it to be multiplied. He doesn't need our money, but he needs to show. He needs us to see that we don't have an attachment to the funds. And as long as we put that stuff in that basket, it doesn't matter how little it is. We saw the two mites, the widow's two mites. But whatever it is, he's going to multiply it above and beyond what we could ever imagine. There are those that didn't have a lot of money. But as the minister said a few weeks ago, the living God, he gave somebody else a car and the living God gave him a car with no payment. We got to be willing to bless others and know that the living God will bless us. We got to know that he is faithful, he is true, and that he is worthy to be praised. He needs obedience. He doesn't need sacrifice. He doesn't take pleasure in the offerings and, and the, the rams and the lambs and all those things. He needs us to obey and to know that he is true. He could do above and beyond what we could imagine in this, in this church. But it says the love of money is the root of all evil. We got to be willing to say, my father, I trust in you. I'm going to put whatever in that basket, whatever I have, according to what is in our hearts and know that the living God is going to continue to give provision. And I give God thanks that he has given us the opportunity to do so. I believe everyone in here has a roof over their heads. And we got to give God thanks. Because he says, the birds of the air have less nest, says foxes have holes, but the son of man have nowhere to rest his head. The living God came on earth and he didn't live in a palace. He went from home to home. But he gave us a place that we could rest our heads at. And we got to give the living God thanks for that. This morning, let's come and let's give cheerfully. Because where would we be if it wasn't for what the living God have done in our lives? I remember when I had, I was down to my last $15. And the living God made a way for me. And I know he's done the same for each and every one in here. Let's come and let's give cheerfully this morning. Extending our hands to the offering this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
We give you thanks, almighty God, that we have the opportunity to give, oh God. You've given us all that we need. And your life, as it said, oh God, it is finished. It is done. All that man could ever need was done and fulfilled, oh heaven and Father, oh God, as you gave your last breath, almighty God. We give you thanks, oh God, for everything that has been given. We give you thanks, oh God, that this morning we could come together, oh Father, to know the gates of Hades shall not prevail, oh God. We give you thanks, oh heaven and Father, that I haven't seen, ear, haven't heard what you have in store for those who are kennel community, church of God. We give you thanks for every miracle, sign, and wonder that you have worked. And I thank you for those, as the song says, it's in the waiting. It's not that far off, but how much do we trust and believe in you, almighty God? As we gave this morning, oh God, we also gave our burdens. We also gave our fears. We also gave our worries. We gave, oh God, every single thing that is trying to hinder us from knowing that you're able to do greater than what our minds could ever fathom, oh God. The financial burdens, you know, oh Father, the illnesses and the ailments. You know, oh Father, the lies being spoken into your people's ears, oh God. You know, oh Father, oh God, the battle between the spirit and the flesh. But you also know the plans and the purpose that you have for us, almighty God. It says, believe and we shall see God. But then it said, when the Son of Man comes on the earth, will he find faith? My God, today, oh God, we, we, we walk in faith, oh God. We give, O oh Father, knowing, Almighty God, that whatever the amount is, you're going to, O oh Father, O oh God, multiply it, and you're going to continue to make the way for your people, O oh God. We give you thanks and praise, O oh God. We all have shoes or sandals on our feet. We have clothes, O oh Father, that we were able to put on this morning, O oh God. We have a sound mind, O oh Heaven and Father, where we could process the information that is going forth this morning, O oh God. We have hands that we could actually put funds in the offering, almighty God. We have access to the living God. We thank you, O heaven and Father, that we don't got to go to the middle person. We can go straight to the living God to enter into the most holies. May we, O Father, show ourselves to be grateful. For it says, O heaven and Father, if we don't do it, you'll raise up the stones. We thank you for everything, almighty God, that you have done for us. We thank you for those things we didn't even, we didn't even notice, O God. For you're not like man, oh Father, oh God, waiting, oh Father, for a thank you. You're just waiting for us to deny ourselves and to follow after you. Every burden, every struggle, every battle, it has always belonged to you, oh God. You always, oh Father, set aside a people and you consecrate them to you and you make a covenant with them. There is no one that can break this covenant. So no one in here, oh Father, has to worry. We just got to trust and obey, for there's no other way. We magnify your name, and we give you thanks, O oh God. For, O oh heaven and Father, O oh God, this church is still open. No matter what we have faced, O oh God, you have always made a way, O oh God. And we are grateful that we bear witness to it, O oh God. And may we understand, as we give this gospel, will penetrate Throughout the community, O oh Heaven and Father, and souls, O oh Father, O oh God, will be saved, and those who are lost, they'll be restored, O oh God. But we have to trust and obey. We magnify your name and we thank you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. All right, so this side is excited already. You guys warmed up. Praise God, praise God. Let me get on to this side. Amen, amen. Praise God. It is good to be in God's house. Amen. I, I don't know, but when I make the statement, it's, it's hard for people to just, like, take that in. Like, it's good to be in God's house. Like, I go to the heat game. They make everybody cheer. They don't care if you, they make everybody cheer for the, for the team. 
because they said it's good to be in the heat arena. And if all they getting is just entertainment and we're getting internal life, we should do better than them. We should be able to praise our God and, and scream out better than that, right? Because you know, you know the team, like the Dolphin teams, you know, for us from South Florida, they win and they lose. But our God does not lose. You know, that's a team that we're committed and is always winning. So we should be cheering all the time. Amen. It's good to be in God's house. I'm grateful to see all those new faces and the old faces that are here today. We, we want to acknowledge you all for being here today to worship with us, not just in physical, but also in spirit and in truth. Amen. And we're so grateful for you guys. We have special persons in here. I know those, the babies, the special babies were dedicated last week. They still here in the house of God. God, good to see the babies here also as well. Amen, amen. Good to see Bryson and Donovan, man. I mean, God is favor our church with all these babies coming around here. Amen, amen. So we also have our mature folks. I, even I know our own beloved Millicent, Millicent Lou, she's here. I know today's also a special birthday also as well. We bless her for her beloved for a birthday. And yesterday was our, our own beloved brother, Minister Roger, Minister Music, man. It's just his own birthday also as well. So we, we got so many people. There's always excitement. Challenges that's going on, but one thing for sure, God is still remain well faithful. Amen. How many of y'all know that God is faithful? All right. So I heard some some agree with me, so that's all right, man. So we've been having challenges with our our internet, and obviously it's not from us, it's from Comcast. So, but by the grace of God, it doesn't change the word of God, amen. We're gonna keep sharing the word of truth. And unfortunately, for those online have had issues getting kicked out. We uh, encourage you, if you come in the house, we won't kick you out. So if you, if you show up here, we won't kick you out. The internet could kick you out, but we're not going to kick you out if you come to this door. So if, if they keep kicking you in and out, now come on home. We'll receive you we'll receive with the spiritual arms. Amen? So, um, but um, as you can see, uh, my task is simple today. It's on Matthew Gospel, chapter 13. This is a passage which I want everybody to be able to Hide it in their heart. Amen. I mean, that's something which you got to sign, seal, and let it be delivered into your soul. I know, did, did y'all feel like I got a little cold in this place? Did, is it cool in this place? Yeah, you guys might not know, but there's some folks escaping from New York, and that's what happened. So they, they thought I didn't notice them. But they trying to escape, uh, and, and they trying to leave those cold up in north to trying to hide in the sunshine. I see you. I see you, Ms. Donna. I see you. You and the whole team trying to escape the cold. But it's good to see you guys visiting your family. It's good to have our extended family up in uh, upstate to come visit us in this church also as well. So we are grateful for you guys also as well. So I want everybody to feel appreciated. Amen. It's just we going through the, uh, the, the cam they having in the heat game, right? They don't get everybody, but they get somebody. Amen. But I just want you to know God sees you all today. And it's good to be here. And for those of you guys online, we might not see you, but God sees you, that you're here with us. Amen? So this is a story. This, this is the parable of the sower. And this, this is one of the passages in Scripture that I believe that we all need to be able to hide within our heart. Amen? I mean, I, we have to make sure that this Scripture is what, is what we as believers, all we have to look into that scripture to reflect within our own personal life. Because if we don't pay attention to the scripture, we could easily become victims or be or, or victimize others not knowing what the scripture is trying to teach us. And this is a parable where Jesus spoke to the, to the people in Matthew Gospel chapter 13, and let's take a look at it. So it's, the Bible goes in Matthew, Matthew 13, verse 1, that same day, day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea, a great crowd was gathered about him so that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, A soul went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on the rocky grounds, where they did not have much soil. And immediately they sprung up, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them out. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some at a hundredfold, some of sixty, some of thirty. He who has ears, 
Let him hear. Father, this is your word of truth. Father, for we cannot add nor take anything from your word. We pray for the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that you may guide my mind and my understanding that every word that comes out of our mouth will be seasoned with your spirit. Father, we pray for the hearers that they will not just be the hearers but doers of your word. Father, we pray as we leave from this place, we will say it was good to be in the house of God. We will go forth and surrender everything before your feet and say, you, O God Almighty, lead us, guide us into the still waters. Bless us in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So a parable is something that you see a lot throughout the literature, that Jesus spoke multiple times in parable. Parables like he used different illustrations to teach the people. But if if parable is being used as a format of teaching or illustration to help individuals to understand, you have to really pay close attention. So this, this, this parable was Jesus spoke to the people, and I just want you to envision this, right? Jesus get on the boat, and then the crowd meets him by the water. And they are there by the front of the water, and Jesus is speaking to the multitude of people. Now, mind you now, they bought the water. So you guys know being bought the water, there's always, you hear sounds, the wind blowing. You hear even the waves cra crashing down on rocks. There's always distractions. What, but, what it, so, but the people there, they have a reason why they're there. They're there to listen. But even though they're there to listen, Jesus spoke to them also in parables to make it more difficult to understand. So forget the listening. They can hear what he's saying, but the true mark that they need to understand. And Jesus spoke to them in parables. So as he spoke to the parables, and he gave illustration of a sower going out to sow a seed. And he gave us all the three illustrations of the first sower. As the sower was gone, he had a bag full of seeds as he's walking, as he's walking to go to the field to sow, to sow his seeds. As he's gone, some of the seeds, they fell by on the path, on the road. And the Bible says the birds, the parable goes, the birds came and devoured them. And then as it was going, some actually fell by the rocky, the rocky grounds. So now the grounds didn't have enough soil. The seed fell in the speed, and the seed was sprung up real quickly. But because it didn't have no roots, when the sun came out, the sun that's supposed to help, Right? That's the part I want you to remember. The sun that was supposed to help, what well, we all know, we learned, some of us learned that in science, the photosynthesis, but, uh, what, what the sun does, right? So a lot of you guys hate the sun, but the sun is actually good for us, amen? And if you don't know, to ask our folks just escaping from New York and all these cold places, they, they know it's good to be in South Florida, right? And so now the sun itself comes in, but when it shows up, since they don't have a depth of root, the Bible says, the, the plant actually what withers away. And then the second of it, it says, not in the third, sorry, is just not the third, the seed fell by the thorns. So it means that the seed fell by, by where the bushes is at, where thorns are there. And when the thorns grew up, they choked that plant because we all know weeds grow faster than the stuff that you really want. All right? And so they, they grew and choked out the very thing that the, the plant or the sower was trying to sow. And then the last of them all was a seed that fell on good soil. And when it fell on good soil, the harvest were 100 fold to 60 fold to 30 fold, which is good, right? Because it gained what? Well, and harvest. So now, as we look through the passage, we're going to go through the scriptures. So now I just gave you the first part. Now, the second part of the scripture is that whoever have ears, let them hear. So, Matthew Gospel, chapter 13, now we're on verse 10. If you didn't come here to do some reading, you're in the wrong place. So this is 1310. The Bible said, that then the disciples came and said to them, why do you speak to them in parables? So this is after Jesus spoke to the multitudes, and he, and he spoke to them by the water, and they heard clearly what Jesus is saying, but does not mean they really understood it. And that is the biggest issue with communication. That's the biggest issue with relationship. Do you understand what the person is trying to illustrate to you? Because that is the reason why a lot of time people are like, oh, you want to church? Man, I received something I want to church. And then everybody else receives something different. And they're like, why are they receiving something different? And it's based on their understanding. So their understanding is going to determine what they receive. So now, now the disciples come to Jesus, 
And they and Jesus, they asked Jesus, why do you speak to them in parables? And let's see what Jesus said. It says, now to you, that's the disciples, to you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it has been given. It has not been given. So the difference between the crowd and the disciples or is it different between the students and those that just show up and go? You got to know the difference. The students, the disciple, all the word disciple means is a disciplined student. The one that spend time and attainive and make the time to go seek for deeper understanding or whatever the teacher is trying to teach. Because there are those that just shows up to class, but they're not looking to understand or now looking to help with whatever that is, to help you better. You know, when you go to college, a lot of us have our major. And your majors, that you, or your minors, your major, you're trying to make sure that all the information that you get during those, those, those classes that, that is required for your major, you spend a lot more time paying it close attention to because you know you, you need it to apply in your future in your job. And the other, and the other classes, you might be like, like, oh, who cares? I'm just want to brush this class over. Or even in, in high school, middle school, there's, there's classes that you like. And then you spend more time paying more close attention to those classes and those teachers than, what, than those other classes. So now, Jesus numerous of time have spoken in parable because he knows not everybody that is there wants to truly know about the kingdom of God. Not everybody that shows up have the right intention. In one parable, in one story, he tells them, them a lot of them came at you because they came to see miracles. They came for the show. They came to see how fun it's going to be. They came, some of them actually came for the food. Just like our minister said earlier, Jesus turned, he turned five loaves of bread and fish to what? Oh, I'm going to be there next week. They just there because they know there's going to be some good eating there. So not everybody that showed up was truly a disciple. Not everybody that showed up was truly a student seeking to learn truth. So to help you, as the, so Jesus said, for you, that's the disciples, it's been given to learn about the kingdom of God. So in order for you to learn, you have to be able to do the basic rule of learning. And that basic rule of learning is found, is found in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, verse 7. Let's look at the basic rule of learning. If you want to know what learning consists of. So Jesus spoke about, it says the basic rule of learning, let's, let's read that together. Matthew, chapter 7, verse 7. It says, ask and it will be given to you. So the basic rule of learning is starts off by what? Asking. If you want something, what you got to do? Ask. When we was going to school, the first thing our parents ever told us, when you go to school and you don't understand anything, guess what? What you need to do? Ask question. That is the first rule of what? Of learning. So now, unfortunately, when we build relationships, nobody want to ask questions anymore. They just want you to assume stuff. You're supposed to know this already. I thought learning deals with asking, right? But we all know I don't want to fight anybody today, so let's keep with the passage. Ask, and it will be what? Given to you. So if you want something to be given to you, what do you have to do? All right, so you guys, some of you guys understand that. If you want something to be given to you, what do you have to do? Ask for it. Ask for it because now the person, there's no more assumption because you did ask and you either you ask, you will receive. So God said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. So what happened if you're not seeking? What happened you show up and you told your parents, you go up, all of us used to go home from school and used to tell our parents. They asked you, did you ask questions when you got there since you don't understand whatever the subject, did you ask questions? Yes, I did. Then they go, did you take the time to go and talk back to the teacher after or, or seek for more understanding? That's the next question. So there's a seeking part. It means that you have to step outside of what your comfort zone. You have to step outside of the, the natural way of who you are. And a lot of us don't want to go further than where we at. We want stuff to just what? Drop down from heaven just for us. We don't want to seek for it. And so the Bible said, ask, and you walk, you shall walk, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you find. Knock, 
and it will be open to you. Nowadays, we don't got to knock anymore. You know why, right? We got a ring camera. You show up. I know when you show up in front of my house before you showed up. Because I got the camera and they show you that you're in front of my house. Before you even get to knock the door or ring the doorbell, I would to see you. Every motion, a lot of us got motion detectors and all kinds of stuff in our home. We could detect when somebody's showing up to our house. But now, for that person to open the door, you have to walk, knock. You have to knock on the door for that person to give one an answer. So if they does not see you, they have to walk, they won't open. So you have to walk, knock on the door. So knocking is also another part of what seeking. So all the Bible's teaching is, is if one does not work, go to the second, go to the third. Don't be too quick to walk, to give up. Don't be too quick because any true student that is focused on whatever that is, they have to keep striving and searching and working hard. And so now, that's what this parable goes on. And Jesus tells them, it's for, you to, it's for you guys to know the kingdom of God. And so as it goes on further into the story, Jesus spoke in parables. And now, let's see what the parable actually means. Because a lot of us might have our own way to, to, uh, to uh, our, our own way of trans, translating the information, but let's allow Jesus to translate for what he means by what he was said. And so now, let's look at Matthew's Gospel, chapter 13, verse 18. I'm getting to somewhere today. So, verse, ch chapter 13, verse 18, Jesus explains what the parable was all about. It says, hear the parable of the sower. So this is when he spoke to disciples. They came to Jesus. So Jesus was able to truly explain to them what was taking place within the place. And then he starts off and says, hear the parables of the soul. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was been sown in his heart. This was sown along the path. So the first thing that happens when you come to hear the word of God, I want you to know there's an opposition that's trying to take away the truth from you. So if your mind, if you come to hear the word of God and you're so busy thinking about everything else, oh, you don't stand a chance. If you come into church and you're sitting there and the preaching is going on and all you think about, I only wish my wife could be here today. I wish my husband could be here today. I wish my son was here today to hear. Once the moment you lose sight, you lose focus, the enemy is already about to take away the truth from you. Because he knows that in order for truth to grow in you, it needs to be hidden in your heart. And in order for it to get into your heart, you have to desire it. And so the Bible is trying to teach you that the seed is the word of God that God is trying to plant in everybody's life. And God cannot plant that seed in your life if you don't want it. If you don't want it, you cannot plant that in there because it's an enemy that's trying to steal that from you. Maybe you might not believe that. Let's look at the passage that actually talks about what is the very sole purpose of what he came to do. So let's look at John's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 9. You're going to learn today. 10-9. Because you didn't know who, what the devil does. Jesus says, I am the door. I'm access. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. And will go in and find, and find what? Pastor, find a place of rest. If you come through the door through Jesus, the Bible says, you will be saved. You will be good. Now, there's the next verse to it. Now he points, now the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Because a lot of folks think that the devil can't kill or nor destroy. But Jesus gives us that information for us to guard the information in which he's given us because there's an opposition that wants to steal that truth from you. So every time you come around and you hear about the kingdom of God, you hear about the power in Jesus Christ, you hear about hope in the living God, there's somebody else that are trying to steal that peace from you. He wants to steal that peace from you. He wants to take away that joy from you, that hope from you. And if you don't know that, you think that, nah, it was just Cindy. 
It was, it, it, it was Brother Lofi. That was him. It was that co-worker of mine that keeps giving me a hard time. No, no, the goal is to steal your peace away from you. That's his goal. Now, however shows up, that's just part of the game for him. However shows up, that's just a game. Because in his, in his way, he's like, I'm here to steal. And if, if anybody never knew a thief, if you never grew up around thieves, and I hope you never did, there are some slimy folks. They will be so close to you by not knowing they're plotting the whole time. They watching, the thief might even know more of your patterns than you, you know your own patterns. They know how you maneuver. They know how you, you get up whenever time you, you go home, how you park your car, where you park your car, and he's been studying you. But you ain't even thinking about all that. But the thief is thinking about all that. The thief is thinking about all that. And one of the things that most people hate in the world is a thief because it's like a big violation. They take away what belongs to you. They take away what really belongs to you. And God is saying what belongs to you is the word of truth. And don't let no one steal that from you. And it comes in so many forms. He comes, he's a thief that comes to steal Kill and destroy. He steals the hope, he kills the hope, and he destroys that there was never hope that was given to you already. Oh, y'all didn't catch it again. Maybe I'm going to help with marriage folks already. Man, thank you, God, for my husband. Praise God for my husband. Now the husband do something wrong. Man, God, why you gave me this man? All he do is bother me all day. See how it's going there, right? All he's doing is bothering me all day. Now he's stealing the reason why he said, thank you, God, for my husband. Now he stole that. Now he's going to destroy it. He comes home, and all he does is tell me what I should have done, what I should have done. So now he's destroying the, that moment that you had with him. All the memories you had have gone now. All the good times is gone because when you're facing that hardship, you don't remember those good times. He has stolen that while you got married to begin with. Now he's destroying it all by a situation or a circumstance. Then the whole thing that happened, your whole, the whole 10 years, everything that's good has happened, who cares? This moment right now, he did not put down the toilet seat. Now the toilet seat is greater than everything that you've ever been through in life. And you don't even see it. And that is how quick it happens. By the time you realize, I'm better off by being by myself. What is life anyway? That's my happiness. Why do I allow somebody to steal away my happiness? Knowing that the actual of the person that really stole it was the devil. Not him. Not her. You see how that's going? Somebody's getting hurt right now. You need to rub somebody today. So don't worry. It's going to be all right. But as you see this in here, to still kill and destroy, but I came that they may have life and have it well abundantly. I came so they can have it like more. The abundance is the 30, 60, 100 fold, which God has promised for all of us. But as the seed is going forth, the Bible said the enemy, he's like a bird that is trying to devour the stuff of which God has given you. But as, as you go, and that's the first parable of the soul of the seed, it's like the word of God. Once it goes, it gets taken out. Maybe, maybe we could look at it from another way. Let's look at 1 John chapter, 1 John chapter 5 where it shows us that we really don't have to keep on sinning because God is with us. Because you know how we all love to say that, we all, I'm just a sinner. We all sinners. And forget that you allow the enemy to steal away hope in your life. First John chapter, chapter 5, verse 18, listen what the Bible says. He says, we know that, right, we, 
That's all of us. We know that everyone has been born of God that's not keep on sinning. Got to remember this. Sinning is continuously. It means that you, you, are, you are in a position of you chose to live a reckless and a wretched life. That's a lifestyle you've chosen. A lot of us keep saying, oh, but that's just the way I am. And the devil's like, I love that. I'm going to use that against you every single time. And, and, and God is saying, that's not who you are because I want to give you my seed. I'm giving you life abundant, but that's just the way that I am. I, you know, my mother was like that. My father was like that. My grandma was like that. And God said, you're not born out of flesh, but you've been born out of the spirit of God. You don't have to do what they did. But that's the neighborhood I grew up in. Everybody I grew up in is just like this. And God said, yeah, that's the world. You've come into Christ. You don't have to keep on doing that over and over it says, for he goes, he goes for, does not keep on sinning, but he who was born of God protects him, and the evil one does not touch him. So because when you're in God's house, when you're protected by God, the Bible says God is the one to keep you touched and keep you, or keep you obeyed from the ways of the enemy. He protects you from that. So now if you keep sinning, it's almost you saying that God can't protect you. It's almost you saying, God, you're not strong enough to fix this problem I got going on. This problem has been going on from generation on to generation. It's, I've known about it. Everybody around me does the same old thing. It is impossible for God for you to fix it. And so he goes, it's going to get better. He goes, no one, right, as it says, we know that we are from God and the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. We know that we are from God, and the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. Do you know that in this world is run by evil spirits? Now, if you don't know that, you already lost the game already. So now, how does it show up? It does not show up in just the shows that you don't like. It shows up in the shows that you might like. How does the enemy show? He doesn't show up in the place that you won't go. He shows up the places that you will go. People think the devil is always in the places that nobody should be at. What kind of businessman will he be? He need to be in the places where he knows that you're going to be at. That's so he could sell you the right products. So you tell him what you want, and he, got you, he will supply anything that you need. So when you begin to understand that the whole world lies, it means the whole world means what governs the world, the behavior of the world, the thinking process of the world, how the world receives information. These systems are not coming from the Almighty God, but coming from the devil. And if you don't know that, you are not being protected because you've opened up for the enemy to destroy you. But there goes the team again. What team are you on? It says he lies. This is where he goes. We know that the Son of God has come to give us understanding so that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true in the Son, Jesus Christ. He is a true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourself from idols. All right? You don't know what that means. For so many years, the best show on television was American Idol. Yeah, I didn't catch it. The best show was American Idol. It was so strong as they have, have Idol in every country. Every country have this show too. I've seen it in all different languages. And that is for us to make it to whatever that is. And God is saying it's an illusion. The enemy is just still in the way truth from you because as they're all striving to be the next American Idol it's like thousands of people only one get in and everybody has get forgotten about and God said I have hope for everybody he said I have hope for everybody I have hope for everyone I have an eternal plan for everyone and you just you rather go be man the American Idol I'm going to make it here and God said, even if you make it, 
you still don't receive eternal life. So what does the seed mean? It fell by the path. The enemy came and took it. How does it look further on? Let's keep going to Matthew. I told you you're going to learn something today. As we're going back to the Matthew 13 again, let's look at a second parable. They are the ones that falls by the what? The rocks. The rocky road. It says, Jesus said it. It says, it says, ask, ask verse 20. As for what was sown on the rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word of God, immediately receive it with joy, yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while when tribulation or persecution arise on account of the word, immediately he falls away. It's like those that when they receive the word of God, it sounds so good, it sounds refreshing, it sounds empowering, it sounds hopeful. But the moment as they keep going through life, when trial shows up, all of a sudden what? Oh man, I was good without being this. They throw away their faith. Remember how earlier I remind you the sun showing up. When the sun shows up, that is supposed to help the plant through the photosynthesis, which to help the plant actually mature. It says when trial shows up, that is supposed to build you and I, we use the trials to leave God. And when God is saying that trials is what is actually supposed to mold you and, and keep you to be a man and woman of God. But when trials come, we're like, uh, you know what? I don't need this. I'm all right. When the sun shows up, the roots, the plant does not have roots. It's saying, oh, we dead. And the trees that look, have deep roots like, thank God for this sun. Because this sun is helping me to grow. But when we meet trials and persecutions start kicking it in our lives, in our job, in our workplaces, in our church, no matter where we go, when trials show up because of the word of God, we start folding and says, I don't want nobody looking at me like that. I don't want nobody thinking about me like, you know what, I don't need to tell them I really believe in Jesus. I just got to, and God said, there you go. You don't have strong roots. You're folding because you think the world is greater than the word of God. You think that the world has something better for you than what the abundance of life that God has in store for you. So he says they start dying. And so now as you look at the passage, how many of us knows about that? You want to see how it looks like? Paul tells the church in Galatia, Galatians chapter 1 verse 6, they these people were men and women of God in their church. And it was doing well, but when trials came out, it's almost like he goes, I'm astonished that you were so quickly deserting him who call you in the grace of Christ and turn into a different gospel. So many people will rather go hear pastors that will make them feel good than hear pastors that are going to tell them the truth. Thinking that by doing that, they could raise their problems. Thinking that by doing that, all the issues, all the trials would disappear. And God, and Paul was telling to the church, he says, you think you going against what God did is going to resolve your issue? That's the ways of the world. They have no strong roots. So when the word comes, when the word, when the word of God falls by the path, it's just like those people that receive the word of God and they realize like, man, I don't have no strong foundation. That means that they've not been seeking long enough. You got to keep seeking and asking God to reveal to you his truth. And if you don't do that, I just a matter of time, when a big trial shows up, you're going to lose everything that you got. And you're going to blame God for it. Don't we all hear him? Man, I don't go to church anymore. I don't believe that anymore. You know, that's the reason why I stopped my faith in Jesus Christ. Man, that pastor was a hypocrite. You know, I came to church, the pastor did this. What does that pastor got to do with internal life? He does not determine your internal life. So next time when you go to, you go, you find out there's a, the, the, one, of the, one of the doctors screw up, don't ever go back to the hospital. No, if you need help, you still got to go to the hospital. So you begin to see that now as he's teaching them, he goes, it says, I'm astonished that you're doing that. And, 
and, and Hosea, Hosea tells them something profound to show them how they behave. He tells them like the people of Israel have become just like this in the Hosea chapter 6 verse 4. Look what it says. It says, what should I do with you, Ephraim? What should I do with you, O Judah? Your love is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes early away. It's like your love towards God that you really talking about, it's like, it's like a dew that early in the morning you come, you see the dew on the grass, and all of a sudden as the sun comes out, disappears. That your love for God is only based on your circumstance. When things are going well, praise God. But the moment things are not going well, oh, man, I don't know if God is real. I don't know what God has been. And it's like, God, it's the worst of love. Where is this love that is real? And God is saying the reason is that because the, the roots are not deep. The roots are not deep. They're by the rocky grounds. Your life in him is not in maturity, and you have to mature. And I'm hoping that all of us are going through these stages. There's a time in our life that we know we hurt the word of God, but it just disappeared. There's a time in our life where we hurt the word of God, we took it with joy, but we couldn't hold on to that season for so long. But then there's the next part of it, and then there's the third one. The third one is you heard the word of God, it was good, it was sweet, but... Verse, let's look at this right now. The thorns came. How many of y'all know what the thorns are? How many of y'all deal with thorns right now? He's just like, man, I can't wait to get up out of here, man. You know what that is. That all of us ready to go, go I can't wait to go to heaven. You just want to escape with everything that's going on, amen? And I hear you, trust me, you're on the same page with you. We all dealing with the same old stuff. It says, now, for what was sown, verse 1, for what was sown among the thorns is the ones who, hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of the riches choke the word and it proves unfruitful. All right, let me repeat it again. Because I didn't hear no amens there. It says, as for what is sown among the thorns is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of the riches chokes the word and it proves unfruitful. The unfruitfulness of God is because of the desires and riches. It's not like God doesn't work. It's just because their riches has overtaken the power of God. They desire to be rich. So because of their desires, God has escaped in their life. They have choked up. And the Bible teaches that, and many have gone away into all kinds of trials because of that, because of their job, because of their careers, because of all these things have hindered them from seeing the power of God. How many people not even in church are spending time with God because I got to work, man. I don't have time. And so you allow the world to choke the truth of God from you. You allow riches which is here and is gone, to take away internal glory and power from you. He said so much, so much so, that if you look at what Paul, what Paul tells Timothy, it says, look at what has happened to these folks. Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9. There's even, even in the house of God, look what is happening in churches. And nobody want to talk about this. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Six verse what the scripture tells. He said, but those who desire to be rich, I'm not saying working hard. I'm not saying doing the best that you can, striving for the good. It's a desire. It means that's what is in your heart because we can't have two seeds in there. Either the seed of God is in there or the seeds of the lie is in there. We can't have two seeds be sown. We cannot have the seed of God and thorns in there. Because one will choke the other. And the Bible says the thorns will grow much quicker than the seed of truth. Because the seed of truth takes patience, takes time, takes watering, takes care for it to grow and mature. But the thorns, it don't matter. No rain, they still going to grow. No sun, they still going to grow. 
Because that is the cares of the riches of this world. And, and look what Paul puts it says, for those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desire that plunge people into ruin and destruction. You, you, you look at what has happened in our neighbors, our community, our society. You sit back, it's like, man, that's some wicked stuff. And only because people have power and have money. And you sit back and, and the Bible is saying, even in the house of God, they've received the truth. They know the truth. But the problem is their hearts are full of desires of riches. It said, but those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a slant, to many senseless and harmful things. Next verse. This will get exciting. For the love of money. So it's not money, the love, because you can't love God and love the desires of this world. One seed has to remain, and that's the seed of God. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evils. So when we say the world is full of evil, we are saying because money is what runs the world. You, you get it now. So the one with more money gets to control the behavior of those that don't have none. And God is saying don't become a victim to that. For it says, it, says, it is through this craving that some I want everybody to say some. It said, through this craving, some have wandered away from the faith and purged themselves with many pangs. It means that because of this, so many pastors, so many churchgoers, so many people have walked away from the faith because of this. You, you can't turn on the television without sow this seed, sow that seed. I said, did they really listen to the parable of the seed? Because if they listened to the parable of seed, they would have seen that the reason why even they're saying that because the seed of God is not in them. Because if it was, they would not be saying that. Because the parable of the seed states the reason why you've walked away and become riches is because you got choked up with your desires of riches. That's what the parable of seed is saying. It means they've gone away. They've gone into more into money, money, money. Everything's about money. So every time you hear the seed of God being talked about, it's always had to do with something with money. And God is saying, that is the reason the thorn is choking the church. The church is looking for more marketing strategies, more marketing stuff, more business stuff. And God is saying, hold up. I'm the creator of everything. I will give you everything you need, but you can serve me and money. You can serve me and the riches of this world because every riches that is in this world is temporary. You have it today and tomorrow it could be taken away from you. It says they're craving. What are you craving? You're craving to be rich. So you've fallen short the glory of God. And God is trying to help us out today. But today, I know you've heard about all the challenges that one have to go through. From the seeds that get stolen by the devil. But for the, the shallow grounds that we have our hopeless situations when life gets hard. All the third area when when our pleasures and our desires and when money takes over what God had purposely planned for you and I. Or the final stage what God has promised for you and I. And that final stage, if we go back to that Matthew's gospel, you can see the final stage which is for all you and I. And God has made you and I a promise. And he said, as for what is sown in good soil, this is the one who hears the word. And understands it. Do you understand what has been happening here today? Or you think, oh, the pastor just screaming and shouting today. Oh, my pastor's passionate. You think this is what it's about? This is not what it's about. This is about the truth of God. That what is the kingdom of God is really about. What we'll seed is the word of God that was planted to use this still alive? Or has been uprooted? Or did it burn out? Did you get tired and burn out about doing right? 
or you allowed the world to lead you instead of the word of God. You felt like people kept on taking advantage of you, the cares of this world. You, you felt like people were taking advantage of you, so you was like, you know what? I'm not going to allow nobody to take advantage of me. God, I didn't say you show up, so I had to do what I needed to do. And God has said, you're going to allow them to lead you? God has said, I want to help you. He said, how do I want to help you? It says, for those who are sown in good soil, that's the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields it in one case, a hundredfold, another sixty, and another thirty. It means once you give your life and truly allow God to work in your heart, it means there's going to be abundance of riches for you. Abundance of riches. The abundance of riches is found in the literature, it's not in, in the things of only in this world. It said abundance of riches when Jesus even gave us a parable. It said I'm the vine and you're the branch. If you remain in me, if you abide in me, you bear the right fruit in every season. You bear the fruit of God. You bear it every season. And Galatians goes and he explains it. He elaborates it even more on that. He tells us what that looks like. Y'all want to know what that looks like? Let's look at Galatians chapter 5. I know somebody wants some scripture. Somebody got food at home and he's like, Pastor, going to make my food burn. It says, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. I want, you, I, want you to, I want you to recite it with me. Let's stand together. I, I'm, I want to have that 30, 60, 100 fold. I want, I want a harvest. Ain't nothing better than having a good harvest. I want to have a harvest that comes from God. People, every day people work hard. They look for a raise in their job. They look for a raise every year. The new raise. I need to get a raise. Stuff and, and I understand because you're working hard. But God said, I have a greater harvest for you. Your raise is going to be 30% raise, 60% raise, 100% raise. Praise be to God. Can you imagine that raise? He goes, it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. It means if you, you're going to get 30% in love increase today. You get an increase in love in this season. You get an increase, 60%. Some of y'all get a 100% fold of love in this season. You, when, you, when your heart is full of love, oh, they, they mad. Because even though you're going through adversity, you still like, why you ain't breaking down like you said? I got love. Oh, you might not know. You ever met somebody that's falling in love? They do things which they've never done before. Oh, if you've, you've seen somebody that's really angry, they also do things which they've never done before. I will stick to the love part. I want a 30 increase on the love. Not being angry and upset. We get 30% fold of love. Guess what else you're getting? You're getting joy. <laughs> I need somebody to shout for joy. We know what the world is going through. Is anybody in doubt about what's going on in the world? No. But it should not steal our joy. Because we're supposed to have an increase in every season. Because the God said we have to decrease so he can increase in us. Uh -oh, today I'm here today. I have joy. Oh, but, but I was driving here and my, my tire blew out with my wife and my kids in it. Well, how will you know? Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm not worried about what happens. I'm concerned about what I need to be doing. And what I need to be doing is trusting in God. It's trusting in God. What, what, what am I trying to say? Joy is going to increase. How many of y'all been having love? Like, man, I'm losing peace. I'm, I'm feeling hopeless this season. God is saying, I'm about to give you an increase of 30% in your peace. I'm going to give you a raise in peace this season. I'm going to about to give you a raise this season. How many, I know some of y'all want to look for that raise. Ain't nothing worse than when it's time for when you work in your job and they call you in. And it's like, man, they, 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 after the evaluation, it determines your increase. All right, I'm maybe I'm just making it up. Some of you guys own your own business, so you understand differently. When you work for another person, they will do an evaluation on you. And that is going to determine how you get increase. But God is saying, all you really got to do is just understand what I'm trying to tell you. And you already got to increase. You don't got to be perfect. You just got to know the perfect God. 
and you get the increase. I'm getting some peace this season. I'm getting peace. How many are getting some patience this season? Somebody said, I'm only getting 1%, Pastor. No, God said you're getting a 30, 60, 100 fold. Your patience is going up this season. It's not going up by 1% or 5%. It's going up by 30% increase this season. God want to show you that even though you go through stuff, you need to let the world know you've been given the patience of God, the power of God. Tell yourself, I've got it. Because anybody gets a raise will go back home and tell people, I got a raise. So when you leave from this place, I want you to go let your loved ones, your family know, I just got a raise. We all know what happens when you tell somebody got a raise. They're going to test you for that. It means they're going to be like, you're going to have to give me some of that too. So that means that since you've, your patience has increased, somebody's going to test your patience. It means that since peace has increased, your peace will be tested. Since kindness has increased, kindness will be tested. Since goodness has increased, goodness will be tested. Since faithfulness has been increased, it will be tested. And you have to stand and say, I know the seed of God still remains in me, and the devil can't steal it from me. He goes, I need, I need some 23 right now. I need some gentleness, some self-control. I need some gentleness and self-control. The Bible says, against such things, there is no law. Those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and his desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also take a step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited. So just because you got 30% increase, you're going to walk around trying to tell people, I've been increased. I'm walking around like you better than the folk. No, that's not what God is talking about. Because you know how y'all folks say Christians could be so conceited. Oh, I've been saved by the grace of God. Look at these heathens. And God is like, there you go, you're conceited. You didn't, God didn't call you for you to be conceited. He called you so you can live in love, in gentleness, and kindness. It says, let us not become conceited, provoking one another. How you provoke one another? when you start acting like you're better than them. When you forgot the only reason why you got to increase because of what Jesus did for you. When, you. when you start taking credit for yourself instead of giving that credit back to the mighty God who's worthy of all praises. Because with him, we live and have what I will be in. Let us not become conceited, provoke one another, or envy one another. Don't get mad because they got the 60% increase and you got 30 don't get mad because they got 100 and you got 60. Well, you should be glad as you got an increase. You got an increase. And that is what it's all about. Amen? Oh, y'all don't believe me. Go in your job. If you don't believe that once, once they, they do an employee evaluation, you go ask everybody what the increase they got. You know y'all going to get mad. I can't believe he got 20% increase and I got 10. I've been doing more work than that guy. I've been, you know how that feels. But God said, don't let it be so in the house of God. Because in the house of God is not the things of this world. We've been blessed with internal hope. And the increase comes from God Almighty. Because our seed did not die. Amen? I'm going to call the elders up this moment. I'm going to call them up. I know there's situations, there's circumstances in our life that the seed has been stolen. It means there's areas in your life that you didn't put God like the way he's supposed to be. Meaning, maybe your health is God. Did God teach you how to take care of your health? You need to learn that. What about the area maybe in your finances? Have you put Christ in there or the enemy have stolen that seed? What about your relationship? Has the enemy stolen that seed? What, what, or, is it, or, or is it getting choked out? Or, or is it getting burdened with the trials and tribulations which you're dealing with? But wherever they, you may be at, today, God wants to give you an increase. And you know where you are falling short. And the Bible says, wherever you're falling short,
Come on over to the Lord, and he will restore you and give you back 30, 60, 100 fold. Amen. So as the elder, the elder is going to be standing up here. And also, after we're done, please remain seated. Don't leave here after they pray. Don't leave here. We have announcement that needs to be made also as well. And so the elders will be here to be praying for you guys. Come by the, the house. Come by the altar. there to be prayed for. I don't know about you, but I need, I need, my evaluation is up. And I need to get my increase. My evaluation is up. I need to get my increase. I've not been going through this for nothing. I know that it's God that heals. I know it's God that breathes life into us. I know it's God that restores. I know God that gives hope to the hopeless. I know it is God that gives internal joy and peace. I know I need some increase in kindness this season. I need some increase in patience in this season. I need some increase in loveness. I need some increase in my healing this season. I need some increase in my relationship in this season. And I'm not going to lie, the enemy is still away the truth of God that is in me to this season. I'm not going to allow no one to take away the joy which God had in store for me. I'm not going to allow my situation. I'm not going to allow my circumstance. I'm not going to allow people. I'm not going to allow the devil to take the seed in which God had promised for me in this season. Because what God had promised for me is for internal life. It's for internal glory. It's for internal hope. And today I'm going to allow God to bring in Increase in my life, increase in my life, increase in my relationship, increase in my circumstance, increase right now in my finance. I want God to be the head of my life, not my own. I want God to be taken seated in my situation instead of my own. I don't need money to fix the issue. I need God to resolve my internal issue in this season. For I know, he said, I know the plans I have for you. The plans to make you the head, not the tail. I know somebody needs an increase today. We're going we're gonna to open up that tab today for your increase. We're going to open up that tab, tab for you today. And that is what God has in store for you. Let the seed remain in you. Let the seed remain in you. Let the seed remain in you. Let the seed of God remain in you. Let the seed remain in you. Let the seed remain in you. Let the seed remain in you. Don't let nothing take away the word of God which you've heard today. God has said, is that he that dwells in the secret place of the most high God. Is that God is able to cover you under the shadow of his wings. God is able to protect you from the snares of the devil. He said, am I come one way and leave all eight and a hundred different ways. Even your enemy, he has the power. He said, he's he going to bless you going in and coming out. He said, he's going to bless you when, whatever you touch. He said, I'm going to bless you beyond what you could ever imagine. He said, I'm going to bless you in everything you eat, the fruit of your womb. I'm going to bless you in that, not only the fruit or the fruit of your womb. I'm going to bless your household. I'm going to bless your children. I'm going to bless your descendants upon descendants. I'm going to bless everything that you've seen and every year not seen yet. God said my blessings will be bestowed upon you. Not just an earthly blessing, but an internal blessing. A blessing of hope. A blessing of joy. A blessing to overcome. A blessing to break ties with any wicked ways and any selfish addictions any, any pleasures, any pressures that you might be faced with. A blessing to release you from the trauma that you've been through in life, for all the pain that you've gone through, for all the burden that you've been carrying, God said, I'm about to release you in this season. I'm about to bring an increase in you in this season. I'm going to die, I'm going to kill everything that has been destroying you in this season, and I'm going to bring you a new life in this season because he's a good God. He's a good God. Let's stand up together and let us raise our hands before the living God. Oh, Father, almighty God, Father, forgive us. Forgive us, Father, for we have forgotten that you've given us a shield of faith to protect us from the foreign darts of the enemy. We have forgotten that you've given us a helmet of salvation. You've forgotten you've given a belt of truth. We have forgotten, oh, God, as you that seated upon high. It's you that's able to pull us from the grounds up. It's you that's able to look down low. It's you, oh, Father, that's the great provider. It's you that said, I am the door. It's you that said, I'm the good shepherd. 
You said, you said it, oh, Father, that is you that is the good Father laid down his life for his children. And, Father, today we are believing of the increase that comes from the Holy Spirit. We're believing on the power that comes from above. Father, we're believing that breakthrough that comes from you today. And today we surrender all before you and we say, Father, help us, oh God. Deliver us, oh God. Wash us, oh God. Clean us, oh Father. Show us your way, oh God. We no longer want to walk in our ways, but we want to walk in the truth and the light in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, there are those of us in here, their minds are being tormented, Father. Their minds are being beat up every day, oh, Father. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus they be able to hold their thoughts captive and place on the beaters of the Holy Ghost. Father, I pray, oh, God, that even though the devil trying to shift them and move them and ruin them, that you may cover them with your blood that you shed on Calvary. I pray for those in need of your heavenly touch. Father, today, may they not leave here the same. May they be renewed. We strengthen encourage, may they be built back up into the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, God. We bless your holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. May the church say amen, amen. If you've been prayed for, you may be seated. If you've been prayed for, you may be seated. They have a last announcement they will be making. If you've been prayed for, you may be seated. If you've been prayed for, you may be seated. If not, if not been prayed for, still remain standing or pray for you. If you've been prayed for, you may be seated. church morning it is good to be in the house of the Lord amen um pastor sister Jessica could you come up here with your husband please yeah she's here <laughs> I know we told you an announcement. It is an announcement, really. Come on up. Last week was our pastor's anniversary, a man of God's anniversary. So we say happy anniversary. <laughs> and we want to honor you because that is what we should do as a body. And we just thank God for you. We ask, you know, that... Um, we, we just ask God to protect you all the time. Amen. Thank you for the word this morning. Um, so it's your anniversary, and we would like to present you with a small token of our appreciation from the church. <laughs> we'll just give you, the, let the, everybody know, the body know what is in there. It's a, it's a little weekend getaway to Marco Island. Yes. Yeah. Now, we know you have lots of kids, but we have, your kids have enough aunties and grandmas here that, that, <laughs> so they have, <laughs> they have enough people here that will take care of them, okay? So we want um, you to know that we do appreciate you. We honor your marriage, we honor your relationship, and we just thank you for the examples that you're setting for even all of us and myself. So we praise God for you, and um, whenever you're ready, you um, just take off. <laughs> I know. <laughs> they, don't, they don't get away enough, you know, and, and sometimes you just need a little break, just even a few days. So um, the congregation just thanks you for what you have been doing. Brother Amner, could you come and um, say a, a prayer for a pastor, please, and his wife? 
Let us stand together and let us extend our hands towards the couple and the pastor that God has given us. Let's bless them in prayer. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for the privilege, God, to be standing before your presence in the presence of your people and in the presence of this man of God and his wife, oh God. We bless them in the name of Jesus, oh God. We shower them with kindness and love, oh God. We shower them with your spirit, oh God. Descend right now in the name of Jesus and cover them, oh God. Bless them, oh God. Bless their finances. Bless their health, oh God. Bless their children. Bless their family, those that are here and extended across the world, oh Father God. And give them energy and strength, oh God. More wisdom, more of your spirit, oh God. More of your love, oh God, so that we may be able to see through him and this family the love of Christ, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, that you give him words from, from on high, O oh God, that he may be able to share with us. We admonish him, O oh God. We thank you, God, for all that you've done in his life, O oh God. He's a living testimony of obedience to you, O oh God. May we align ourselves with what you're doing in his life as one body, O oh God. We bless your name and we thank you, God, for his leadership. We thank you, God, for his wisdom. We thank you for his time, oh God, that he shared with so many here, oh Father God. We thank you for his heart of service, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for his diligence, oh God, to always seek your face, oh God, so that he may pour out towards us, oh God. We bless him in Jesus' name, oh God, and we thank you for your provision. You've always provided for your church, oh God. We are a testament, oh God, that you are still working on, on Kendall Community Church of God. And we just thank you, oh Father God. Help us, oh God. Help us to fall in line, oh God, with what you're doing in your kingdom work through the AJ family, oh God. And we just pray, oh God, that as the days pass and the months go, oh God, we may look back and we say, oh Father, we thank you for you've been faithful to complete the work that you started, oh God. We bless them as we exit these doors, oh God, that your spirit may continue with us, oh God. May continue with Pastor Joe and his wife and their children, oh God. And together as one family, oh God, we are one family, oh God, that the love of Christ may flow through us, that we may love each other with the love of your spirit, O oh God, and we may fall in unity, O oh Father, and we may be able to shake the foundations of this earth, O oh God, with the unity that is found and the love that is found here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, church. Appreciate it. And also, it's reminded on this Saturday is going to be my father's memorial. And we will be celebrating his life. And he's been such an impact, in, in especially the Kendall Community Church of God. And so this Saturday at 2 p.m., we'll be having my father's memorial here. And we're going to be celebrating the life of his life and as my family joining together. And we just, we're going to keep celebrating. Amen. And so just want to encourage, we would love for everybody to be here and also for our love. And so we thank you guys for love and support to our family. And we are grateful for it. And my mother will be here and all the families will be here flying in, in and out of town. So Saturday at 2 p.m., the church, we know we're going to be celebrating the life, life of the man of God that's served this church for over, over decades. And now God has taken him home to glory. So God bless you. Thank you guys again. We appreciate you, God. And may his face continue to shine upon you. And may the glory of God continue to be with you. God bless you and God keep you.